What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and this past week was a very, very slow and boring one, which is usual when Apple has a busy week the week beforehand, because of course last week we got multiple software releases and multiple product releases as well. But this week was a different story because we, well, didn't really get anything noteworthy aside from tvOS 15.1.1 on Monday and HomePod OS 15.1.1 on Wednesday. That's right, we got two public software releases and none of which were for the iPhone, iPad, Mac, or Apple Watch, which is pretty strange. I cannot remember the last time that's ever happened. But anyways, in this video, we're still gonna be talking primarily about iOS, iPad OS, and Mac OS because, well, that's what we all are most interested in here on YouTube. So we're gonna talk about the current state of iOS 15.1, iOS 15.2 Beta 1, Mac OS Monterey, and more. So we're going to talk about the bugs, the performance, the battery life, and of course, take a look at the community poll to see how your guys' experience has been as well. All right, so we're going to first discuss iOS 15.2 beta 1 because we do have a lot to talk about with that. And then we're going to move on to iOS 15.1, the public release, which I know a lot of you guys are currently on. But the first thing I wanted to mention is that we still have the spotlight search issue, the spotlight search bug in 15.2 beta 1. You can see I search for photos and nothing comes up, even though I have of course the photos application right there so that bug is still persisting even after a reboot and yes i have everything toggled on for the spotlight search so there's really no reason why applications should not be showing up right there but anyways now that we're in the photos application i wanted to show you guys a screenshot of the new scheduled summary ui so i talked about this in my 15.2 beta 1 what's new video but i didn't really have a lot of good examples to show you so it does not populate for me every time so i'm assuming that will be fixed in beta 2 but this is the new look of the scheduled summary here on 15.2 and i really like it i think it looks a lot more modern a lot different than really anything else we see on ios so that's what it looks like right there for the summary you can see it shows the number of notifications up there in at the top right and it shows more updates down here and then when you tap on it to expand that view you can see it shows up like this so still a little bit of a different ui you can see we have two twitter notifications side by side right there which is pretty neat and then one below it as well so just a whole new scheduled summer ui and i actually like it so i'm assuming we will see some improvements to that with beta 2 but i like it so far and then the big new feature in 15.2 is the app privacy report and that has been working great so far it's really you know helped me understand which applications are contacting different domains you know more frequently than others like for example speed test for whatever reason i hardly even use the app but it's still contacting multiple domains so you can see right here, it's doing appmeasurement.com. So just pretty interesting to look at. And I think this is going to be a massive feature. And I think a lot of advertisers and websites are gonna be really mad at, you know, at this coming out. So kind of like Facebook was mad when iOS 15 released. Now with App Privacy Report, it's gonna be kicked up another notch. And I think a lot of other you know, websites and other advertising platforms are gonna be kind of mad about this because we're gonna be able to see you know, all the domains that are being contacted. So I don't know if that's gonna lose you know, people money. I don't think it's gonna lose Facebook any more money, but I do think it's gonna be interesting to see what happens when this actually gets pushed out to the public. And then as far as the App Store live events, this has also been very interesting to watch ever since last week because every single day, there is a new live event in the App Store and it's really fun to actually watch. So sometimes it'll be like in-app, you know, activities, in-app events, and other times it will be like an actual event. Like tonight is going to be the UFC fight. So you can see it shows there's a live event and you have to download the Showtime application to, you know, access that live event. So it's really cool. I like what Apple is doing here. And when you tap on it, there's a whole new page here for this event. It kind of tells you everything about it. And you can see it shows the time and everything up top. So I like this little addition here inside of the App Store. And then one other thing I did want to mention, especially now since a lot of people got the new AirPods 3, is that the spatialized stereo works in YouTube and Twitter and multiple other applications as well. So if I go ahead and put one of my AirPods, I'll put my AirPods 3 I'll put one of them in my ear real quick. I'm gonna go to Twitter. I'm gonna go to these spaces right here and go in to one of these spaces. So we're just gonna be in this one right here. And if we go into our control center here and haptic press on our AirPods, you can see down here, it shows spatialized stereo. So you can actually have, you know, spatial audio with head tracking enabled for Twitter spaces. You could do it inside of YouTube videos. So you could hear spatial audio for YouTube videos. It makes them sound better. And I know a lot of you guys know this already. It's been around for a little while, but a lot of people are just getting the AirPods 3 and it's the first pair of AirPods with spatial audio. So just 
just know that you could use spatial audio and more than just the music application. And then I did also want to mention that SharePlay was added in macOS Monterey 12.1 beta, and I did test it out and it seems to work just as well as it does on the iPhone and the iPad, but we still don't have support for things like Spotify, for Netflix, any of the major applications that you would really use SharePlay on. So we're still waiting on that. I know a lot of people ask me all the time when we're gonna see Netflix support, Hulu support and things like that. I'm assuming it will be very soon, but we just don't have it right now. Now, as far as bugs in 15.2 beta one, I told you guys about the spotlight search bug right there that is still persisting. That's probably my most annoying bug, but we also have issues with the left behind alerts. So if you have the AirPods and or an AirTag and you leave it behind, sometimes you'll get alerts you know, when you don't even leave it behind, it could be in your pocket and you're going with it and you'll still get left behind alerts. So that's one bug that a lot of people are facing. We also have an issue with the notification center here at 15.2 beta one. So for some people, when they go to clear notifications, it doesn't actually clear out the summary. So if you still have a scheduled summary right there and you go ahead and clear the notifications and then go back to your control center or your notification center, it will still show the summary right there. So we're having multiple issues with the notification center here and at this first beta, but those should be pretty easy fixes. And I would expect a fix for that in beta two or three. Some people are also seeing issues with the AirPods three little pop-up right here. It's actually for the AirPods three and the AirPods pro. It'll show some placeholder text down at the bottom. I have not faced that. I did face it in 15.0, but I've not seen it so far here in 15.2 beta one, but some have. And then also the spotty Wi-Fi has continued here on 15.2. And I tested this again and 15.1 consistently gets better results on Wi-Fi than 15.2 beta one. But aside from those annoying bugs, there's really not too much to complain about here with 15.2 beta one in terms of performance third-party apps are performing just fine there's really no crashing which is strange because some of them are crashing on 15.1 the public release but not on 15.2 beta one so really not too much to complain about with the performance aside from those minor bugs really the biggest bug for me is of course the spotlight search right there so not too much to complain about and it's the same deal with battery life so battery life is about the same so far for me as 15.1 i know some people are saying that's a little bit worse but for me, it's been about the same here on my 13 Pro Max. Of course, I'm not using this on my daily device. I'm using 15.1 still, but overall I'd say battery life is very, very similar. You're not gonna be able to tell a huge difference. Now, moving on to iOS 15.1, I am running 15.1 here on my main device, the iPhone 13 Pro, and I'm not really seeing too many issues right now. I mean, we do have some third-party applications freezing up, but as far as first-party apps and just overall throughout the OS, I'm really not seeing many issues at all. I mean, 15.1 seems like a very, very solid update. Not too many bugs. It patches up a lot of issues that we had on the previous versions. And I think it's fine to update for anybody. If anybody was on the fence about it, you should definitely go ahead and update. Of course, because we do have share play, we have the improved battery life, improved performance, improved security really no issues. I mean, I really don't have too much to talk about here. That's why I didn't want to talk about this first because there's really not too much to talk about with 15.1. Now I will mention more issues when we get to the community poll because you guys might be facing some things, but for me overall, I really have nothing to complain about as far as the overall software 15.1 battery life is excellent. The performance is excellent. A few minor bugs, but really nothing at all compared to like 15.0 through 15.0.2 where I had multiple issues, not too much to complain about here with 15.1. Right, so since I didn't have too much to say about iOS 15.1, that's where we're gonna see what you guys had to say in the community poll. So if we go to my channel here and go over to the community tab, I ask you guys every single week how the latest versions have been treating you. And you can see here I asked, how's your experience been this past week? So for me, that's gonna be the first one right there. And you can see that is the most popular answer. So you can see 67%, and then 17% around 15.1 compared to seven and 3% on 15.2 beta one and 7% on iOS 14 still. So most of you guys are running iOS 15.1 right now. Let's go ahead and read some of these comments to see what you guys had to say. Malik here says that he's running iOS 15.1 and he's having issues with Apple Music heating his phone up after listening for about 10 to 15 minutes. So that's interesting. And it seems like other people are having that issue as well. I listen to Apple Music every day and I've not noticed that, but it seems like some people might be having that issue. Greg here says, my battery life since I went to 15, and even still now 15.1, has been significantly worse on the 12 mini than it was on iOS 14. On the other hand, 15.1 did resolve a voiceover issue where the app switcher was not reading what app I was switching to. 
So that's good to hear, uh, not for the battery life, but for the bug fix right there. You can see other people are chiming in about their battery life as well. Looks like some people are having issues with the AirPods Pro in terms of connectivity on 15.1. I've heard that quite a bit as well on iPhone XS and 15.1, and I've noticed a ton of overheating issues. So it seems like multiple people are having overheating issues with Apple Music and for YouTube right here, it looks like. Ghost Flame says that he's on iOS 15.1 on iPhone 13. It's pretty smooth and no major issues found so far. And multiple people are agreeing right there. I've never had overheating issues with my iPhone 11 Pro. And since I live up north, we're seeing colder temps now compared to summer. Since 15.1, I've had major overheating once or twice a day every day. So that's interesting. So that is like, I think the third or fourth person who's already mentioned overheating. So it seems like that's going to be the major issue here on 15.1. I've not faced that, but you know, it seems like a lot of people are right here. I may have to pay more attention because I haven't noticed it myself, but maybe I need to, you know, listen to Apple music and feel my phone a little bit more because it seems like it's an issue mainly with Apple music. Someone is still dealing with these storage issues still on 14.8.1 by reading other folks problems with battery life. I'm happy I held off. So especially if you're on the 12 mini, it seems like a lot of people are having better battery life on the 12 mini on iOS 14 compared to iOS 15. iOS 15.2 betas have one issue I've noticed with my iPhone XS. When I get notification summary and want to clear it all, the provided X at the top of the overlay doesn't work. I have to manually slide all of my notifications within my notification summary away. So that's similar to what I mentioned earlier. Seems like a lot of issues with the notification center on 15.2 beta one. Someone's having issues with the YouTube picture in picture square on the home screen, saying they have to go into the application to get it to move around and unfreeze. I'm using 15.1 on my iPhone 11 and performance seems to be solid. Battery life is good, but could use some room to improve. Tony here is having issues with FaceTime. It looks like it's heating up. And when he tries to switch to another application, the whole phone freezes and can't do anything. So maybe related to SharePlay, maybe that's why if you're playing music or, you know, engaging in SharePlay, it is the first release with it, you know, iOS 15.1. So Apple just may need to patch up some things related to SharePlay. You could be facing the overheating issues because of that. 15.0, no major issues. Honestly, no point of updating since I got the iPhone 12 and all available updates are mainly aimed for the 13s. Now that I would disagree with because SharePlay and the app privacy report, all those things are nothing to do with the iPhone 13. That's for all devices. So you may want to look at updating to 15.2 when that gets released. If 15.1 didn't entice you enough, my alarm icon still doesn't show. I've rebooted my phone a few times with no luck. Do you mean the one that's up here in the status bar? That could just be because you have something else taking its place. Like you can see right now, I have one of my focus modes. That could be why, not too sure. Having a weird iMessage bug, it keeps saying activation unsuccessful. So that could have been an issue just with the servers. I'm not too sure, but I have noticed a bug in 15.1 where sometimes it'll say your message wasn't delivered, even though it was. But anyways, thank you to everybody who commented on this poll. I did go ahead and read all of your comments beforehand. So I appreciate everybody for voting and leaving a comment. It really helps us out understand, you know, what's going right and what's going wrong with these software releases. All right, so now what's next here for Apple? So we went this entire week without seeing a software release or a beta release. So I would expect at least one of the two next week, the week of the eighth. So I do think we're gonna see an iOS 15.2 beta two in the first half of the week. So maybe the eighth, ninth or 10th, we should see an iOS 15.2 beta two. We could even see an iOS 15.1.1 and iPad OS 15.1.1 at some point next week as well. Because again, we did get tvOS and HomePod OS 15.1.1, but nothing for the iPhone or the iPad. So that could come, but that could also come at some point, really any time in November. Apple has never said a 15.1.1 is coming, and there's really no major issues to patch up that I'm aware of. So we may not see that next week, but it is also a possibility. And then as far as iOS 15.2, the final release, Release, that could come as early as the end of November or as late as honestly it could come as late as January it depends on when Apple goes out for their break but I would expect to see 15.2 before the end of this year and then as far as Mac OS Monterey we should also see some updates for that very soon because there have been some bugs found with the M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pros where Safari would just crash when watching HDR videos and there's also an issue where some Intel Macs got bricked so we should see updates pretty soon for Mac OS Monterey as well. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is a recap of this past week and just an update on iOS 15.1 and 15.2 beta one. So hope you guys enjoyed this video as usual. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS 15 and Mac OS Monterey coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.